At nearly every industry event, we reach that point with the chicken and egg question. Which comes first, an electric truck or the infrastructure? We're here in La Mirada, California with U.S. Foods to show that sometimes when the trucks arrive first, the infrastructure can be portable and temporary. Here in La Mirada, we are starting a new direction for U.S. Foods. Until last year, we had zero electric vehicles and now we have 29, soon to be 30. And it's the beginning for U.S. Foods of an electric fleet. I've never seen anything of this scale. The passion around it, the group that is leading this charge is unbelievable. They're all industry experts, and it is so cool to see a corporate initiative hit the field and have the field just as excited as the corporate team. We've established a goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 32.5% by the year 2032, so we are doing a number of things to evaluate different technologies to be able to help us achieve that goal. And here in La Mirada, we've got one of those particular projects underway where we're adding 30 electric vehicles. We've been able to successfully deploy 15 of those into daily operation, delivering to the market, delivering to our customers, and we've had great success with these vehicles. Our permanent infrastructure has not yet been installed. However, we took the step of uh, adding some temporary chargers or some portable chargers here on site. We've got five of those, and we're demonstrating that we can successfully operate these battery electric vehicles even with portable chargers. The portable chargers are, are great because uh, once we get done with it here, they can go to another area that's going to have the project start up and they're all ready to plug in. All they need to do is uh, find the electrical where it's going to go. The power level for the portable chargers varies from about 60 to 75 kilowatts and the permanent chargers we're going to install here are going to be around 90 kilowatts, so fairly comparable. So it does give us a lot of information about what to expect when we have the permanent charging stations as far as how long is it going to take vehicles to charge and how do we manage that and understanding of the rate plan and time of use rates and how do we work around that to make sure that we get a good cost effective solution for charging these vehicles. As soon as trucks started to arrive we were able to successfully start charging them and start putting them into service and what that really provided to us was the benefit of learning early rather than waiting for the permanent chargers to be installed we get the opportunity to start training our drivers now, to start training our technicians, and start learning all of those other details that we have to manage through to change the process and change the operation here to electric vehicles. So it gave us a big head start on implementing these electric vehicles rather than waiting for the infrastructure to be installed. These are actually production level. These are plant-built trucks that go down the assembly line in our uh, Portland truck manufacturing plant. We had a first generation E-Cascadias and EM2s running in this part of California for a couple of years before this. Uh, we were actually at a million miles of real world deliveries in those first generation vehicles as of October uh, 2021. At the end of that pilot program, we were about 1.5 million miles. So plenty of experience gained that we were able to implement in the final series production design. And that's what we're actually looking at today is the series production, really the first generation of E-Cascadias that are going out in the field uh, into customer hands. Everyone is very engaged and very excited about the wonderful opportunities and the benefits of these zero emission vehicles fully electric, fully quiet, plenty of power, plenty of torque. Once the drivers get in the vehicle, they don't want to get out. It's truly a better driving experience. It's better for our drivers. I know it's better for our customers. They prefer it. And I think it's going to actually result in a safer working environment for our drivers because there's going to be less of a fatigue factor. After drivers get in this thing, they never want to go back. They run lighter, they run a little bit faster, and it makes the day a lot better for our drivers. This is the first E-Cascadia that has a fully proprietary Daimler-designed in-house powertrain on it. So that's the Detroit E-Powertrain. Those are our own high-voltage batteries and our own E-axles uh, that are designed specifically for 
Freightliner's chassis. It's not an off-the-shelf solution or anything like that. Um, and these Z-Cascadias also come standard with the Detroit Assurance suite of safety systems. So it's the first time that we're getting these electric trucks uh, with all the safety bells and whistles out in the field. We've had a relationship with U.S. Food since the beginning of our program to test and design and develop electric vehicles. And then that naturally progressed into a consulting relationship. So our Detroit e-consulting organization has actually been working with U.S. Foods to right size the charging installation that's uh, gonna be implemented into this site and to make sure that they're specking and designing charging stations in the most cost-effective way possible. This deployment is gonna involve the installation of 15 350 kW power cabinets. We're splitting that between two services. One of them is gonna carry eight power cabinets, the other is gonna carry seven. Each of those services needs its own transformer. Each of those transformers are going to be powered by a PME. That PME is sourced out in the street. Uh, we've got uh, primary metering switch gear out in the street. We've got a capacitor out in the street. We've got a lot of utility equipment going on. Uh, so we're kind of divorcing ourselves from that in order to feed this site over here uh, just to make the whole thing sing. U.S. Foods is working with Nextera on this project because Edison is only bringing a portion of the infrastructure to the development of the, of the project itself. We're terminating our work right before the power cabinet that is going to be designed and installed by the Nextera team. The role of your fleet manager or your maintenance manager has expanded. So not only do they have to maintain the vehicles, they have to maintain that charging system. They have to make sure that those charging systems are functional, and they have to make sure that every vehicle is charged before the dispatch time arrives. And that's a whole new paradigm for many of our maintenance managers. When the trucks start returning right around noon, we got our first wave that goes straight to the chargers. And on average, they're charging for like two hours at like near approximate 65% on the return. And about more than halfway through, the second wave of trucks come. So they're ready to be pulled once the first round is charged. So immediately we put the next one on and they're ready to go. And we do that with the third. So for every truck that they do switch out, the techs and the fuelers and the attendants walk the line of the five chargers to make sure that all the chargers are working. And before disconnecting the truck, or they do disconnect, they gotta check the actual charge uh, percentage in the tractor because the chargers, they are capable of resetting themselves if they go off but they don't restart the charge. So that's where the manual comes in again, that our eyes have to be on top of it to replug the truck and continue the charge if necessary. Our vision is that we'll have more of a dashboard in the maintenance shop and our transportation center where the fleet personnel can look at this dashboard and see what's, what the status is for each truck that's on a, that's connected to a charger and see what kind of state of charge it's having. There's a lot of capabilities that uh, we're now starting to explore relative to what we can do as far as managing that whole process. The driver has the ability to program the charging session from inside the cab of the truck. So the truck and the charging equipment are communicating with one another and the truck ultimately controls how much power is being delivered by the charger automatically. Our trucks are spec to receive up to 180 kilowatts per charge port or if you have an eCascadia with our larger battery pack you can actually spec it with two charge ports, plug two chargers into it at the same time and charge at a rate of up to 270 kilowatts. So then even with the larger battery pack, you can actually charge from zero to 80% in as little as 90 minutes. So we wanted to make sure that our customers had that flexibility, um, but at the same time, we recommend that you charge it as slowly as you can get away with to reduce costs overall. We recognize that the industry is changing. Internally, we've really got a swagger here with like the mechanics as an example. They are taking this challenge head on and they see it as an opportunity to learn about what's coming next. We know that other sites are going to come and look to us for guidance and so our mechanics are actually very excited about it which is fantastic actually it's a nice process i mean i actually like the cv trucks a lot more than the diesel trucks uh, due to uh, uh, maintenance wise uh, less maintenance <laughs> the main thing about any new equipment is don't be scared it's just another learning process everything is kind of like the same read the diagnostic manual my experience in working with electric vehicles in the past indicates to me that the brakes are going to have a significantly improved life cycle. Tires, on the other hand, pretty much a break even because if you think about a traditional vehicle with foundation brakes, when you apply the brakes, it still requires tires to stop. So the tires do both the tractive effort as well as slowing the vehicle down. We right away noticed a big difference with our drivers, period. Our drivers just loved them. A couple of drivers were a little apprehensive at the beginning, 
to want to try it. But once they did, it's just crazy how much they love them. My name is Richard Rodriguez. I work for U.S. Foods. I'm a delivery driver. I've been driving for 24 years. This is definitely the biggest uh, technology change I've seen in uh, my driving career. The rolling down the road is very, very smooth, smooth ride. Uh, the mirrors don't rattle. Takeoff is a lot faster. It only shifts one time between 15 and 20 miles an hour, and then away we go. I clock in at about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, go through my pre-trip inspection, you know, make sure everything's okay, and uh, arrive at about my first customer about 2.45 about 11 stops a day. So I only drive about 55 miles. When I come back to the yard, I check in at driver check-in, uh, unload my pallets, my pallet jack, then I'll go park my trailer in a designated spot. Either I have a 36-foot trailer, a 28-foot trailer that day, and then I'll bring my electric vehicle back over here where the charging stations are at and uh, plug it in. I would like to tell other drivers to be open-minded, you know, be open-minded with the technology because a lot of drivers out there don't think that these trucks can perform, but believe me, they can perform. No one is more excited in Southern California about electric vehicles than our customers. We have hospitality customers uh, that love when electric vehicles pull up because it doesn't wake up their guests. Our deliveries occur early in the morning. We have large accounts that have uh, their own GHG goals and our trucks contribute to their lower emissions. We're trying to get truck drivers, right? We're, we're trying to get mechanics. So we want to get the very best talent in the industry. And there's zero doubt that having the newest, latest technology is a recruiting tool, which we're seeing actually in the market. Don't be afraid to start a project just to get the experience, you know, because every fleet is different. Every application has its own unique uh, characteristics. Don't be afraid to fail. There are some uh, challenges with the electric vehicles, but, you know, we've had great success. Our drivers love them, technicians like them and they are operating and uh, successfully performing the, uh, the tasks that we've asked them to do. It really makes your brain tick. You fire, fire on all cylinders and you, you think about things and you come up with ideas and you come up with plans and solutions and follow through. So when you walk in places, when I go to other facilities, they go, oh, you're from Los Angeles. And you're just like, you're that guy, you know? And, and that's, the, that's US Food LA. And that's kind of like our, our game day and we're that championship team.